I'm Jerome Davis. I'm the artistic director of Burning Coal Theater Company, and Deb Royals is joining me today. Deb is uh, known uh, in the community uh, by and large for her work with the Justice Theater Project, but she has a new project now, the Pure Life Theater. Deb, can you start off by telling everybody about Pure Life, what the genesis of it was, and what its ambition or its goals are? Um, well, we, we be, there was a group of us who, um, Connie McCoy, uh, Ronzel Bell, Bobby Sherrard, that had worked together, that we decided um, uh, that it would be nice to work that way all the time. And um, so, um, and we knew that there were a lot of companies like Majoa and Honest Pint Theater Company and uh, 221B and Women's Theater Festival and uh, the Rebecca Show uh, that didn't have a permanent, maybe just a little, maybe closer to April, I had begun a conversation with Michelle about uh, investigating rehearsal space for some of the other work in the course of our conversations that, um, that th th things that she was going through that it might be a good idea to start talking about perhaps as we got into June and July, perhaps taking over the space um, because her life was going in a, in a, a different direction. Right. And, and so this group kind of came together and said, okay, we want to do this, but we want to do this without having hierarchy where everybody that's sitting at the table is equally important. And we put together a very diverse group of people that are what we refer to as the Pure Life Theater Core Leadership. Okay. Yeah. And every single person okay. on that team is very much in step with the Nello McDaniel uh, train of, um, school of thought, which is everybody brings something that's significant and important. Mm -hmm. um, there's bankers, lawyers, designers, mm -hmm. uh, me, you know, I, we all have something that we can offer to the group. Right. And thinking about how we merge or evolve as a theater company. And, and we do so without anybody being labeled as artistic director or executive director or managing director. Mm -hmm. We are the core leadership. And, um, and, and so we kind of put that together and then we worked out, um, by the time we got to December, we finally were able to work out a way to take over the space at Sonorous Road. Mm -hmm. We were able to purchase the assets and immediately, even before we signed the lease, we had folks coming to us saying, we need a place. We need a place to be able to do theater, to do work as fast as we could to find space for people. And of course, that, that calendar right now looks very different. <laughs> um, the other thing we were doing is trying to offer our, um, we, were, we were hoping to rent to people at far less than what they typically would do. Our objective was not to make any kind of revenue off the rental of the space, but to provide a place for people to do work that was very economically friendly. Mm -hmm. And it also would include any type of rehearsal space that we can make available to them. So a part so they would pay for the weeks that they were in performance, but not for rehearsals. And so Is that weeks the revenue up. Right there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then our, our rental for this space was significantly lower than what I typically had to pay for in the past. Um, and again, it was because we felt like we could generate enough income from, for our own work and our camps that it would just be this beautiful conglomeration of artists working together to make theater, have a space to make theater. And, right. you know, so the, all these different theater companies that we're working with us uh, are referred to as the collective. And we're all kind of like this, there's the core leadership and then the collective of theaters who are all working to make this stuff happen. And we were like this big family that's kind of ebb and flowing in and out of the space in a beautiful way yeah. that benefits everyone. Um, and so right now we just had a Zoom call with, most of everybody this past Saturday, it was hard. It was, we were all having to reschedule everything that we're doing. Yeah. So, um, and trying to think about, and, and, and there's a whole lot of not knowing. Um, the most important thing is um, that we all be safe and follow the guidelines as set forth by the CDC and, and practicing what we have to do to protect people in general. 
and as important uh, the arts of what I've known my entire life since I was like three years old and as important as that is to me and as much as I care about it I care about people more so uh, we all said okay we know we're going to have to reschedule we don't know exactly how it's all going to work right now the theater companies are we're thinking maybe july august maybe later yeah um and they're so what they're doing is submitting to us uh, letting us know what their thoughts are around what they'd like to do um which means we also will be rescheduling pearly which we were so jazzed mm -hmm. to do it hadn't been done in the area right that's right and forever and back when we did Porgy and Bess, Ronzel and I met each other and we became very close friends. Um, and he told me, he's like, Deb, someday I want to do Pearly. Mm -hmm. well, that was one of the things immediately as we established this core leadership, we were like, let's do Pearly. So now we're trying to figure out when that might happen. And I'm just going to trust that, um, that it will happen and unfold in a way that will be beautiful and wonderful for everybody when we get to that moment. Good. How's your, uh, how's your landlord uh, treating you with all in the face of all this? Um, thus far, he's been very kind. I know um, there was, I didn't have a conversation with him. My husband, Joe, had a conversation with him recently and they're still, they haven't come back to definitively say what they're doing, but I know that they're talking to their accountants and their folks to say, what are we going to do? Because we're not the only ones in that building. Right. There, there's us and there's restaurants and there's a coffee shop and there's their, their business center. Mm -hmm. And I think that, it, you know, and uh, my hope is, is that everybody will be kind and loving and respectful to each other in this moment. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like the government is stepping up with some uh, potential funding uh, to cover uh, lost uh, revenue on leases and things like that. I, I hope you guys are looking into that as well. And, and it sounds like your landlord uh, as well. Um, so in the future, uh, Deb, uh, it, it, Pearly is the show that you're looking forward to. Are there other things you want to talk about that, that Pure Life has coming up that you're excited about? Well, I know I've already talked uh, to Nate Jacobs, who was kind of the person behind the creative, beautiful Motown Christmas that we do, who yeah. Nate Jacobs, if, if you don't know, is the artistic director for the West Coast Black Theater Troupe in Sarasota, Florida. He is the 2015 recipient of the Larry Hamlin Award. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, so he's got, and he goes to the National Black Theater Festival. Actually, I just saw Nate in New York back in early February right. um, for the TCG Awards. Okay. Um, and he's given us, he's already said, Deb, if you want to do Motown Christmas again this year, you absolutely have the rights for that. And I love Nate for that because he knows it is a revenue generating show for us. Mm -hmm. And we're, so we'll be doing that in December, both at our space at, um, on Hillsborough Street and also with the town of Cary. Good. And beyond that, we're like at this moment of, okay, that's as far as we can think right now, because we also want to, we don't want to schedule all these shows for ourselves when we know Honest Pint still has shows they want to do. Yeah. The Women's Theater Festival still got to think about when do, if they have to reschedule the festival, when does it happen? Um, 221B, which is an emerging, you know, young group of um, yeah. uh, theater artists in, our, in our, our community that are trying to do good work. And so there's this whole conglomeration of people we've got to think about before we think about only ourselves. Right, right. We had a, an entire uh, calendar full of uh, dates between January and July this year. Um, and uh, suddenly it's completely empty. <laughs> Right there with you. Yeah, and, so and, and what we did is, you know, I have this wonderful uh, Juwan Cofield, who's a part of our core leadership. Um, he was able, and then we have a student from Southeast Raleigh who's incredibly gifted, Marquise Martin, mm -hmm. who the two of them went into that into our space and were able to clean, pull away chairs, repaint, redo. So in the midst of all this, we've completely washed the theater down, so Good. to speak. We've cleaned everything up. So we really utilize the time to, like a lot of folks are doing in their homes, to reorganize, to clean, to paint, to spruce up. So when we do come back, it'll be a beautiful, welcoming 
place to be. Well, speaking of uh, reorganizing, what, what do you think we're learning about our society uh, in the midst of this pandemic, Deb? Is that something you have been able to work out in your mind yet? Uh, I feel like we're, so, there's a message being sent here in some way. Um, is that something you'd want to comment on? Well, um, I had a very dear friend of mine, Vincent Drayton, who's a part of Majoa, say to me about two or three weeks ago, he said, I have to believe that there's God intends a gold, a silver lining for this. And, and, and I agree with that. My hope is, is that people will see or search out the silver lining um, as opposed to being fearful or unkind or disrespectful or out for only themselves, that they would think beyond themselves to be loving, respectful, kind, um, to appreciate what people offer to the world, what they bring, how, how each person is important. <laughs> each human being is so important. And, um, and, I, and I love Vincent because he is that way so much as are so many people in our lives and it was really wonderful to hear because i had already in my head been thinking what is god's plan in all of this yeah. and um and i hope it's a wake-up call to you know the times that we've been incredibly selfish or hurtful or tried to erase people we don't want to deal with or you know like we, we are human beings and we are here on this earth together and it is so important to be kind. You know, I remember Chuck Davis, who was like a dad to me, said to me, said to so many of us, is that the only time we look down on someone is when we're extending our hand to help them up, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot of what we've thought about as core leadership there at Pure Life and had actually, we were in the midst of naming our main stage after Baba Chuck. So I hope in the midst of this, we remember that. Don't, that we would never look down or hurt or be unkind to someone, that instead we would extend our hand to be loving, respectful, and kind. It's, uh, it, it has a leveling effect too. If you, um, if you walk through the neighborhoods of Raleigh, it doesn't matter the economic um, status of that community, uh, everybody's uh, literally in the same place right now. They're all uh, tucked away in their houses. So in some sense, it has had a, a leveling effect and maybe people will see it that way. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. I hope so. I hope so. It should be a wake up call to what the potential is for all of our hearts and minds, yeah. that there's so much there that we could do it in a better way maybe. Yes, I agree. I couldn't agree more. And I appreciate the work you're doing, Deb. I, I wish you break a leg on the... the <laughs> uh, it started auspiciously, um, but, uh, but we uh, will all be rooting for you and doing everything we can to help. If there's anything, let us know. And, uh, and thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. same to you, Jerry. And I extend love and respect to you as well. Thank, thank you. you so much. Take care.